Hey friends, so there is a lot, lot, lot of OTT content and tutorials all over YouTube. And it just so happens that producers like to use it a lot, a lot. So considering how much lotness there is of OTT content already out there, what could I possibly contribute to the OTT conversation? Well, as it turns out, a lot. I decided to spend a little bit of time watching a bunch of tutorials on OTT, and honestly, I'm a little disappointed at how much multiband dynamics itself as a device is overlooked, misunderstood, and features are just not covered. Now, in case you've been living in a cave under a rock, OTT is a preset inside of Ableton's amazing multiband dynamics device, and it can turn your tracks into instant bangers. Or at least that's the promise. OTT stands for over the top, and novices who are just beginning their music production journey can commonly make badly produced or dull sounds come to life by simply dragging the preset onto a track. But honestly, that's about as far as most people take their understanding of OTT. But multiband dynamics is such a powerful and overlooked tool that in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do way more with it than just making bro step. Let's check it out. So first, let's just get something quickly out of the way. By far the most popular sound to make with OTT or to use with OTT is a bass sound. So here I've got just a vanilla operator patch and of course this is what it sounds like by default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop this down an octave so it's very deep and then I'm gonna use this second oscillator here to kind of sweep in some FM sounds. So I'm gonna open the attack up a little bit. I'm going to add some level to it and then let's go ahead and mess with the chorus. So classic bass sound, right? Okay, and so now we're gonna go up to our multiband dynamics and we're gonna go over to OTT. We're gonna drag it and drop it on this track. And commonly, a lot of folks will, you know, duplicate this a couple times or a lot of times <laughs> and all of a sudden you get that all too familiar, crazy compressed, smashed sound. And thereby doing this crazy squashing of the signal, going back to the operator and changing something about it will have a huge effect on the sound. Especially adding something like distortion to the filter. <laughs> You've all heard this sound before. So the funny thing about this is that kind of sums up a lot of the YouTube tutorials that are out there on this subject. They're basically saying, put one or 100,000 OTTs on your bass and voila, go have yourself a trendy EDM career. But there's so much more to the story than that. I think the next thing worth mentioning is that x for records released a slimmed down plug-in version of the OTT preset called OTT. And while they are filling a need for people that don't have Ableton Live to get this kind of sound, they kind of whacked the original idea of multiband dynamics with an idiot stick. Now the OTT preset in Ableton and the OTT plugin are functionally identical, but some key features were removed from x version. And I say key features because multiband dynamics is so much more than just a trendy sound generator. And those of you willing to watch the rest of this video will gain skills that I'm sure that you will use from this day forward. Let's check it out. So first of all, and perhaps the most important thing I can contribute to the OTT conversation is this. OTT splits the signal into three bands, lows, mids, and highs. If you leave the crossovers, specifically the mid-high crossover point where it defaults to, it will force sounds into a very similar space and is more likely responsible for the sameness disease or why so much EDM music has a similar tonal signature to it. Now you see, OTT works by taking the loudest parts of a signal and crushing them down, and inversely taking the lowest part of a signal and raising it up, thus creating a neatly homogenized, heavily controlled signal on the way out. Because of the extreme nature of this effect, where your mid-high crossover is will have a massive effect on the tone that you're creating. So let's go ahead and take these OTTs right here, all three of these, and I'm gonna put them into a group by hitting Command G. I'm gonna reveal the macros, I'm gonna click on Map, and I'm gonna go ahead and map this mid-high crossover point to this first macro right here. Each one of these, I'm gonna do all three of these together because I want you to be able to hear the big difference that this makes. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and play this bass sound and check out the huge difference that moving this crossover point makes. Insane, right? Now, another thing that I should say is that much of the time when you're doing this kind of work, you're also gonna be putting a filter at the end of your bass sound because as you can hear when I let go of the note, 
there's a lot of that extra white noise that's just basically the OTTs trying to make up for and upward compress the noise floor of this sound, right? So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm just gonna grab a filter, put it at the end. And maybe just for good measure, I'll go ahead and grab an envelope. I'll map that to the filter frequency. So now that we've got all that controlled, take a listen to the difference that we can make here. So now that you've heard the huge difference that moving the crossover makes, I'm now gonna send a bunch of different sounds through the same setup, and hopefully you can hear how important it is not to overlook the crossover control. I like to call this action tuning the OTT. This one simple action is so important to do because each sound is different, and each different crossover setting can yield better and more desirable results, and dare I say, more original sounds. If you want to create actually novel sounding music in extreme genres like EDM, this one simple thing can be really effective. X for OTT doesn't even allow for changing the crossover point, so every sound fed into this plugin will inevitably enter into the same tonal territory. Now I'm not saying that every single sound fed into Xfer's OTT or into Ableton's OTT preset will yield exactly the same sound if you don't change the crossover. Of course not. Each sound is unique, and the compressor can only do so much. But I will say that it will force sounds into a much more similar space. And the effect of doing this achieves that sound, that OTT sound. I think it's also really fair to say, though, that the vanilla OTT sound is very familiar to listeners, and if you're going for that homogenized pop EDM music or that sound, knock yourself out. But in my opinion, there's just so much more sonic territory to explore by simply adjusting the crossover at the mid-high point. While there isn't any real data on this, the weird reality and my assumption is likely that the biggest use case for Ableton's multiband dynamics is simply people dragging and dropping the OTT preset all over their set. But Ableton's multiband dynamics is so super useful in so many different mixing scenarios. And next for records, OTT can't do any of these things that I'm about to mention at all. Now before I get into it, if you have a specific use for Ableton's multiband dynamics that I don't cover here, please leave it down in the comments because I love discovering new ideas. Anyway, let's check these out. So in this example, we have a recording of a piano, and it's pretty bad because there's a bunch of resonances inside of the room that it was recorded in. Take a listen. Notice that it kind of sounds boxy, right? So I'm going to grab a multiband dynamics, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tune these crossovers so that I can kind of dynamically control this room resonance that's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solo the midband. And at this point, we're going to be filtering out of this midband everything below 120 hertz and everything above 2.5 kilohertz. So what I need to do is I need to tune this up. So let's take a listen and I'm going to do that. So I'll go ahead and start the low around 400. Now with the top frequency, I'm gonna start pulling this down until we've honed in that range of bad resonance. There we go. So you can hear that around 900 hertz, uh, that's kind of the end of that. So now this mid-range is basically representing all the resonances that I wanna control. So this is so simple. All I need to do is take this guy right here. What this is, is this is the threshold for the above section of the multiband dynamics, I'm gonna pull this down and I'm gonna raise the ratio so that whenever this frequency gets to be too loud, it'll simply just compress it, right? So check this out. Now what this is gonna ultimately do is make this band a lot quieter. So I might need to turn this band up a little bit to compensate. So now let's go ahead and listen to this without the multiband dynamics and with it.
So to me, this is just so much more of an elegant solution to this problem. If I just use an EQ, that would be a static setting. The multiband dynamics is moving and breathing with the audio. As the frequency gets to be too much or it's annoying to the ear, it's pushing it down. But then when the piano is quiet, it's still there. So it's kind of a way to preserve that room resonance to give it that character. But whenever it gets too annoying, we're pushing it down, right? So in that same vein, I've recorded myself saying that, that multiband dynamics is super useful and I emphasize the S's or the annoying parts of my voice when I'm saying that. Take a listen. Ableton's multiband dynamics is so super useful. So obviously I'm emphasizing the S sounds of what I'm saying because multiband dynamics is also a really, really powerful de -esser. Let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna drag a multiband dynamics onto this. And yet again, we're gonna be tuning the mid band to take care of those S sounds, right? And so I'll go ahead and solo the mid band. I'm gonna push the low crossover as high as it will go because I know that it's likely everything above 2K or 3K where those S sounds are gonna be. And then I'm gonna mess with the high band. So you can see that every single time I have an S sound right there, you can see that it's jumping up. So let's go ahead and maybe we'll just go in here and listen to this section right here. It's so super useful. I'll go ahead and loop this. It's so super useful. Right now let's listen to the whole thing. It's so super useful. So at the moment, multiband dynamics isn't really doing anything. So yet again, I'm gonna go to this mid band. I'm gonna go to the above. So right, this is everything that is going to be affected by this side of the multiband dynamics. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit and raise the ratio. Is so, is so super useful. Here's without it. Is so super useful. Here's with it. Is so super useful. And of course, I also need to mess around with the crossover frequency up high because I'm still trying to preserve the air of what I'm saying. So maybe I should push this up a little bit, maybe up to 10. Is so super useful. Is so super useful is so super useful. And so now we've controlled those really annoying S sounds, right? Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is that multiband dynamics can actually be an incredible transient designer or transient shaper, okay? So listen to these different kick drum sounds that I have here. Each one of these kick drum sounds is a little bit underwhelming. Like they don't have a nice, bright, strong attack and they would probably get buried in a mix, right? Let's go ahead and grab multiband dynamics and drop it here. Now, something to understand about multiband dynamics is yes, it does your classic compression kind of sounds, upward and downward compression, right? But what it also can do is act as an expander, and let me explain that. So let's listen to this first kick drum. We can hear that most of the energy in this kick drum, and we can actually see that most of the energy in this kick drum is in the low end, right? If we wanna add energy to the top of this, we could simply just turn the output of the highs up, right? That's one way to do it, but we could do that with an EQ. A maybe more effective thing to do is to use an expander. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the upward compression threshold all the way down, or essentially the below, and I'm gonna switch over to the above, and I'm gonna pull this down really low so that the threshold of this gets crossed, okay? Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this over to peak mode instead of RMS mode. This is gonna force the compressor to be listening to the peak signal and then adjusting what it's doing based on the peak signal. The next thing I'm gonna do is that instead of going this way with the ratio, I'm going to do the opposite. The opposite of this kind of compression is called expansion, okay? So now if I go this way with it, take a listen to this now. Let's go ahead and listen without it. Let's go ahead and increase the effect by turning the threshold down. Boom, you can really hear the big difference that that makes without it, with it. Now again, you can go ahead and mess with the crossover frequency. Maybe we want more of like that mid-rangey kind of sound, and the way that I achieve that is by moving the crossover frequency down. And you can also see that I'm clipping when I do this, so I should bust out also a saturator to make sure that I'm not crossing zero. So I'll bust out this saturator, and I'll turn on soft clipping. Okay, cool. So. Like I said, this is just one sample. You have to tune this. Let's go ahead and use a different example. So you can hear that there might be more top end frequency in this kick drum, so maybe I'll back the threshold off a little bit. Without the multiband dynamics, with it. Just so much more of a thick, juicy, strong transient right at the beginning of that kick drum, right? Now this third example, 
This is a very, very low pitched kick drum. Here's without multiband dynamics at all. And we can hear that there's hardly any of that top end in there. So in this case, I would have to not only put this threshold lower, but I'd also need to tune the split way lower to get more of that top end, whatever top end is in the signal into the compressor. And it may be prudent at this point to bring the threshold back up a little bit. And there we go. Just such a huge difference that this thing can make. And of course I should probably adjust the output a little bit. Bam, a much better kick drum than, right? Cool, so hopefully you can see how much of an overlooked tool multiband dynamics is. And also hopefully you got something useful out of this video. Understanding everything that's happening under the hood with multiband dynamics would take much longer than the average attention span of YouTube viewers, but it can drastically make your mixes sound much better. If you want to truly understand this device, I cover it fully in my Mixing and Mastering with Ableton Live online course. You can learn more about my Ableton courses up here or down in the description. If you like this kind of thing, consider subbing to the channel for more. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you next time.